my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are doing um, how to turbo your bike or so you want to turbo your bike so in this one I'm just sat in here because I've got shit to do and blah 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 any road so um, this is actually uh, a bit off the rails of what I wanted to do but fuck it we're going to do it anyway basically what I want to do in this one is I want to talk about uh, blow through and draw through so generally you have a carb like so and inside here you have and then you have a slide spring and all that rubbish and then your needle so basically generally what you have is you have a carb like this and then you might have a little rubber boot like so and then you'll have you know your engine so you'll have a port like so you'll have a valve like so spark plug all that shit and then your other port we don't need to worry about that too much and then you have your cylinder and then you'll have your piston like so and what you do with this entire system is <coughs> when your piston descends excuse me when your piston descends like so a larger volume uh, is created and then basically when this valve opens the air that is in the manifold will go into the cylinder and then the air outside will rush past your carb into your carb sorry through your carb um, and this um, uh, venturi effect and the pittet effect and all the rest of it there's all a, there's a lot going on but basically for this video what you have inside your carb is you have a vent so let's just imagine that fuel's going in from the other side basically what happens is is there has to be a um, an equilibrium difference uh, not an, a difference not an equilibrium <laughs> it's trying to balance itself out so basically as um, air passes straight past the main jet with your needle in and all the rest of it what happens is is that the pressure here will drop the pressure will go down when the pressure goes down that means that the pressure that's being applied to your fuel via atmospheric pressure from outside so atmospheric pressure here um, and let's just say that this is um, I'm trying to do this upside down let's just say this is 14.5 psi psi let's just say that's 14.5 psi that is applying a pressure to the fuel um, because it's vented to atmosphere this is why if you turn your carb upside down loads of fuel pisses out it doesn't just piss out your main jet it actually pisses out your vent so all carbs have to have vents to their fuel bowls so the pressure drops here and if we no i can't turn that around it's a good thing i've got loads of pieces of paper in it inside our engine we have inside our carb we have a fuel bowl and its only way out is through our main jet like so which has a little hole in it like that we have fuel in here like so and this vent is pressing so there's a 14.5 let's just say 15 psi pushing down when the area inside your venturi here as the air rushes past and the pressure drops let's just say that this is 10 psi this is 10 psi in here the pressure that's forced down here is as we said is 15 psi so because there's a difference then the fuel is forced up into this jet and goes into the stream of your fuel and is whipped away and carried into your engine now the problem comes when we put a turbo uh, an impeller sorry a compressor um, a compressor here obviously it's not that size but it's just for demonstration so um, the pressure in here will increase as in as an entire system your manifold pressure and all the rest of it because we're running off the fact that this was 15 psi and now it's dropped to 10 
because of its velocity. Now that this is pushing in, um, just say 20 psi, this pressure here will be just say 15. If we had the same amount of loss, um, this would be 15. So if this is 15 in our manifold as it's rushing past, not manifold gauge pressure, just actually in the Venturi, then 15 and 15, the fuel just stays where it is. The fuel doesn't go anywhere. anywhere. So how do we sort this out with a turbo and a carb system? The way we do this is you have the same thing where you have your fuel ball. We have our passage for our main jet, like so, just like before, like this. But on this side, obviously now we have our turbo snail, we have our manifold in here, <coughs> and we have our vent, just say coming out here, out the top of your carb kind of thing. What we need to do is, on our um, impeller housing, on the exit, on the actual housing where it joins the carb, we need to attach a line, a feed line to there. So let's just say the pressure in here is 20 psi, that's what we said it was. That's gauge pressure, so that's 5 psi of boost because atmospheric is 15. We're just going with 15 because it's easy numbers. So we've got 5 psi increase in pressure due to our impeller. Then what we do is we are pumping 20 psi down here, like so, which means the pressure acting on our fuel is 20 psi as long as this entire thing is sealed um, our pressure pressing on it is 20 psi as this 20 psi comes through um, it drops to 15 because of our venturi let's just say it does that so we've got 20 here 15 here so fuel pisses up now there is also another problem with this um, What happens is this, we have a fuel tank, awesome fuel tank, must be a Kawasaki, um, and we have our fuel bowl down here with our fuel level in it and our carb, yeah, all good, like so, we have our fuel, we have our turbo snail here like so. Now, the way this fuel bowl fills is a bit of both is that it uses the buoyancy of the float that's just to do do with fuel level but the feed of fuel into our carb and we have fuel in the tank now because tanks are vented the fuel pressure pushing on top of the fuel is 15 psi it's atmospheric oh can't do an s backwards pzi <laughs> uh, is 15 psi now the air in here if it's off our feed from our turbo snail the feed in here is now 20 psi so we've got a bit of a problem here because what it means is is that the air pressure inside here is actually higher than the fuel so what will happen is is the fuel won't flow anymore or it'll be very it'll be shit the problem is is that the fuel ball it kind of balances out Generally what a lot of people do is a lot of people put a motor in here They put a motor in here just like a little pump like the XJ600 Sometimes you'll have fuel starvation problems where your carb will empty out now it shouldn't do But there is like I say there's this because the hydrostatic pressure and so on so generally there really shouldn't be a problem as the fuel level drops the float will drop due to buoyancy and then it'll open the taps and fuel will enter, and then when the fuel gets high enough, the buoyancy will close it. What can happen is just that the air, the higher air pressure in here can actually hold that valve open for either too long, stuff like that. You can get funky effects and all the rest of it. So fitting a low volume fuel pump like what is fitted to the XJ600 um, is actually not a bad idea. Um, but again, you've got to, it, it, like I say, this is, trying to cover all bikes full stop. Now, 
one thing that people might ask is, well, what happens if you do a blow through, uh, a draw through and stuff like that? When you do draw throughs, it is, look at the state of this table. Uh, when you do draw throughs, it's a, a flip reverse in a sense, as in you're going this way. Um, so you're going through the carb first. So if you're going through the carb first, then you don't, you can just have an atmospheric vent. It's not a problem. If you're going carb first, then turbo, then there really isn't that much of a problem. Apart from when you start getting fluctuations in manifold pressure and stuff, it can actually blow reverse flow back through the cam stuff. We'll go through that as a separate entity. People are asking a lot about how you do um, blow through carb setups and how this uh, you can get the fueling situ situation sorted out. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to convince the engine that, uh, if you want to think about it that way, that 20 psi or whatever your boost pressure is is now the new atmosphere. Um, you can have a vent that goes to the top of your fuel tank vent if you really wanted to do that. That's a bit of a dodgy thing. Um, but yeah, you know, you're trying to convince the engine that atmosphere is now 20 psi. You can't see that very well. Uh, atmosphere is now 20 psi, not the 15. So everything that is vacuum, um, not vacuum, everything that's atmospheric dependent, i.e. your fuel ball, um, you basically have to convince it that whatever is in your manifold is you know, in your fuel ball. Um, what you can do is actually put a restrictor in here. So you might have a six millimeter or something similar just say, let's just say it's a six millimeter um, vent for your carb. What you can do is you can put a little jet or restrictor in there. Um, this basically just dampens um, the pressure pulses in a sense that you get from your impeller with a, uh, your manifold. I should say impeller really, that's generally where you put them because the manifolds are tiny because this generally mounts straight onto your carb. But basically manifold pressure is a way you can do it as well, but generally I like to come straight off the snail. If you put a little restrictor in, basically if you've got your pipe, if you have a little bit of pipe with a smaller hole in it, um, you can put that in and basically that dampens this, um, the fluctuations of the manifold pressure and all the rest of it, so you don't get so much pulsing in your fuel and all the rest of it. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.